Okay, Andrea, so I've got my drive. I've got my, my field view drive. Um, I want you to walk me through how, how I'm going to get this set up inside my cab. So I know that I've got to plug it into something. I've got to connect something. It kind of makes me a little bit nervous to get going. Um, walk me through the steps. Yeah, for sure. So no need to be nervous. It's actually fairly simple. Have you ever paired um, anything else Bluetooth to your iPad or your phone before? Speakers. Yeah, so just like that. So let's go to our cab app for a couple minutes here and let's actually go to our iPad settings. So I'm going to go to settings and find where my Bluetooth is on uh, my left side of my settings screen here. So I'm going to go into Bluetooth. First, double check our Bluetooth is turned on. Uh, mine is, so that's good. Next, let's plug in that drive and, uh, and see what happens here. Awesome. So normally we would have a nine pin diagnostic port um, somewhere in the cab that we would plug into. Right here we're just using a pigtail to get power to um, to the computer. But there are situations where we do have to have the harness that Andrea was talking about and that's where we would take a GPS source and the ray controller source, have it together, and then we would have this nice nine pin diagnostic port to put in. Um, how I put it in is, is I just kind of turn it, line it up and you can feel it slide in and then you can hear it click. I could feel it, I guess I couldn't quite hear it. And then I know it's getting power when it's green and then it starts flashing blue. When it starts flashing blue, it's looking for that Bluetooth connectivity. Yeah, so on my iPad here, I can see uh, some of my devices that I've already connected and then underneath other devices, I have a harvest demo and that's what this drive's called. So I'm gonna click on that. Yours might just be a long uh, digits, uh, some numbers and click on that. So now it says it's connected, which is great. So I've got Bluetooth to the drive connected to my iPad. Um, now I'm going to go back to my cab app. So I'm going to click into my cab app and actually go to my settings first. And in, the, on, in my settings screen on that left hand side, I can see devices. And you can see that harvest demo there. It says tap to connect. So we tap to connect that. Here we have the option to change the name if we want. Click next. And it wants us to identify our equipment. So we created our equipment. We made Chaps our tractor here. Uh, select him, click next. And then uh, we had Dan and Sarah as our planter and our seeder. I'm gonna choose Sarah, click next, and then click finish. I noticed that the drive stopped flashing blue, which is good. When it's solid blue like this, that means it's going to be connected. It's going to be connected to your drive, and um, your drive's going to be connected to your iPad, and you're ready to you're ready to roll. Yeah. So you might get this pop up asking if this is your field view drive. This is your your drive that you would normally use in your seeder or your sprayer. Just click yes. So now we're ready uh, to go to that map screen and start mapping. So first, we're going to go to this home button here and tap into our map screen. Here we get a little different visual than if our drive wasn't connected. So these panes along the left-hand side, some are yellow and some are green. Do you want to tell us why, why they're yellow or why they're green? So first of all, um, if they're green, we know that we've got, um, we've got something going through them. If they're yellow, we, we've, got to, we've got to actually add something. We've got to enter information into it. So if you go ahead and click on the hybrid, you got to tap to enter. And here's where you would select the hybrids or the seed treatments that you have, um, as well as the applications that we have. So it's looking for something. Remember how before we, we attached those to the fields? We attached every application, every hybrid, every seed treatment. This is where we would, if we had that pre-populated in, then it would show up as all green on the side. So if we select a field, I'm going to choose field Kieran. Mm, good field. High yielder. <laughs> And I get a pop-up here asking about my active field. So if I'm actually in my equipment connected to my GPS, I'll also get this pop-up when I'm nearing a field. I'm going to hit yes. And here is uh, bringing up those hybrid and application uh, options. So if I tap in here, tap to select, here's where that field hybrid that I chose is at the top of my list. So for the Kieran field, we wanted that brand and wheat right at the top. And then, like you mentioned before, if we had a last minute change, it's really easy to choose a different option. Hit select. Um, with an air seeder, we also have to identify the tank selection that that wheat's in. Makes sense. Which tank is your wheat in? Always in four. Not always, just this time. Done. 
And uh, were we adding a seed treatment with that wheat? Yes. Ah, good old Raxel Pro. Confirm. You can see that that variety tab at the top changed to green. Now I want to select that application. I'll choose my wheat blend. Looks good. I uh, have to select a tank. Which tank is that wheat in? In one and two. Done. Confirm. And then are we just having uh, one blend or are we having it something in the other tank? Well, it's nice um, to have the option, but today we're just going to have it um, have the one blend, the side band. Okay. We would have to go and disable that within our equipment settings. Otherwise, it won't be able to start planting because it thinks we should have a second option in there. Well, let's put one in. Okay. So we can tap to select, add new application, uh, second wheat blend. Granular. Uh, 1152. Um, 30 pounds. Nice and light. Just a little start. Perfect. Click done. And there we are. Can select tank. Three. Perfect. Confirm. Now we're all green. And you can see we're on our way to seeding. The nice thing is, is we're tapped into that rate controller. Uh, in this situation, we had a top con. We would have the cable that would connect our drive to that top con monitor and our tractor's GPS. And that means that as soon as we start seeding, Fieldview is going to start painting a map. What if I want to drop a pin? Oh, great question. A couple options on dropping a pin. I can actually have a drop a pin option on the side panes, just uh, as you can see my wheat blend and so on. If I hit edit, I get a few other options. I can customize Ooh. these. Uh, so there's a few different things and drop pin is actually one of them. So if I want to use that a lot, I can take my finger, drag that over and replace one of my current options. Experiences that I've had and uh, customers have often told me that the drop pin feature is um, is worth its weight in gold. Um, I have customers that tell me they've used drop pin feature religiously. So then they, at the end of the year, it seems like they break less feeder chains in their combines. It's a lot more accurate, easier for them to go back to. So I recommend, you know, hitting your drop pin button every time you see rocks, if you need somebody to go put it up. And I like it that you can change the color. So red for rock is kind of often what we would do. Um, or other times if you've got a large operation and you need to go back and seed some small areas, just to drop another pin in those areas. If you started early and you need to go back and you're maybe putting in barley or, or oats or, or even going in with an earlier um, variety of corn, you can go in and you can find those areas quite easily and, and be more efficient. So drop pin feature, um, it's really nice to have. And like you said, you hit the button and it drops it right behind the tractor, right where you're at. Yeah, I drop tons of them when I'm seeding and then give the iPad to my brother and he goes and picks all the rocks. <laughs> Sounds like you've got the best job on the farm. You betcha. <laughs> So that's really all there is to it. Fieldview will do um, the rest of the work for you, painting those maps as you go. The biggest thing are making sure you change your fields when you get to the new field um, and changing those crops and fertilizer blends. Um, if you do make a mistake with that, we can often go back and edit it. But having that accurate data going in means it will have accurate data coming out.